President Biden, after his insane speech talking from the gates of hell, is now walking that back. He was out today and Peter Ducey over from Fox News asked him a question sort of saying, hey, Mr. President, you know, now that you're off of all those drugs and Adderall and uh, adenochrome or whatever is used to jack you up and get you out there to mumble through a 24 minute speech, Mr. President, did you mean what you just said out there? Are you going to stand by all of that? Like, you really think that every single MAGA Republican is a threat to American democracy? Are you sure about that, Mr. President? Because uh, there's a lot of them out there, like 70 plus million of them. Would you like to clarify any of those statements? Here's what the president said. Mr. President, do you consider, Mr. President, do you consider all Trump supporters to be a threat to the country? No, everyone, come on. Now, the media is kicking him out there. Like, there's a, his handler is like, media, get out of here. Get out of here. Don't ask him questions. He's ripping off his mic, and now he's going to answer a question. I don't consider any Trump supporter to be a threat to the country. I do think anyone who calls for the use of violence fails to contempt the violence against you and refuses to acknowledge the election has been won. Insists upon changing the way in which the rules become votes. That is a threat to democracy. Democracy. Anybody who challenges votes or anybody who threatens violence, right? So that that classification of MAGA Republicans just got really narrow pretty quickly, didn't it? It's like it's like everybody, and then it's like, oh, no, no, only the violent ones. Uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre said only the office holders, and now he's saying, well, it's kind of a little bit more complicated than what I said last night. What? Everything we stand for, everything we stand for rests on the platform of democracy. People voted for Donald Trump and supported him out. They weren't voting for attacking the Capitol. They weren't voting for overruling the election. They were voting for a philosophy he put forward. So I am not talking about anything other than it is inappropriate. And it's not only happening here, but other parts of the world where there's a failure to recognize and condemn violence whenever it's used for political purposes. Failure to condemn the, 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 the attempt to manipulate electoral outcomes. Failure. To- so uh, you, you kind of lose track of what he's actually talking about. It's really hard to parse that together because now he starts talking about global affairs and he ultimately just turns around and sort of uh, leaves. Here's how that is. All right, so not much there, but it seems like he's really walking that back because as we learned from the transcript of his speech, he had a little different tone the night before. He said, too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. He calls him Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the foundations of our republic. He didn't say violent MAGA Republicans. He didn't say people who are questioning the election. He didn't say anything like that. He said the opposite. He said, there's no question. The Republican Party today is dominated, driven, intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. 70 million of them who voted for Donald Trump. He says that is a threat to the country. So the majority dominated Republican Party is a threat to American democracy. Not a single sentence in there. The word violent is not in either one of those sentences or not in any one of these modifiers even, right? He has a little, he walks this back a little bit in the middle here. Not every Republican I'm talking about, but only the Republicans that work with me are good. The rest of them, anyone who embraces their extreme ideology is not. They're MAGA. So that means if you oppose the president, you're a MAGA Republican. And now he's saying only, I only meant the violent ones. I only meant the election deniers or whatever. Not true at all. He's been very consistent about this. He came out previously and he said this in a different speech on a different day. The president calling the GOP ideology semi-fascist. And he's also saying that they are direct threats. MAGA Republicans are direct threats to your economic security and your personal liberty. Here he is again. The MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and economic security. They're a threat to our very democracy. They refuse to accept the will of the people. They embrace, embrace political violence. They don't believe in democracy. 
They don't believe in democracy. They are ending America. They are directly threatening your very well-being and your existence. He's been consistent on this point. Today, he's going to try to walk that back because he's probably getting a lot of blowback from the Hitler facade that he was in front of. But the White House is also walking some of this back. Uh, not really, in fact. Here's Corrine Jean-Pierre. Jean We're going to talk about what she had to say. And Corrine is now defending the military being used and being present. She was delivering a message in front of the press, and she got asked about the Marines being there in particular. She said, you know, uh, question, uh, Mr. Ms. Corrine, you've got a lot of issues with this backdrop sort of being ridiculed all across the Internet. It looks like Joe Biden was delivering a very tyrannical communist type of message. And you also use Marines there. Is this politicizing the use of the Marines? Should they have been sort of used as a prop in this manner? Why did you have them there at all? Women who protect us every day and fight for it every day uh, believe in as well. The presence of the Marines at the speech was intended to demonstrate the deep and abiding respect uh, the president has for these service, service members, uh, to these ideals. Uh. The audio went out, I don't know why. Hang on, it's gonna come back. Come on back. Service members uh, to these ideals uh, and the unique role our independent military plays in defending our. De well, I don't know why it keeps dying right there, but here, let's 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 see if I can capture this this piece here. I don't know why it just like this clip is not. Playing. No matter which party is in power, again, no matter which power party is in power, ideals uh, and the unique role our independent military plays in defending our democracy. Okay, there no it is. No matter which party is in power, again, no matter which power party is in power. Okay, so that was a little bit choppy, but she's saying that Biden wanted them there because he respects them. Why? Because the military is important in defending our democracy respect uh, the president has for these service service members uh, to these ideals uh, and the unique role our independent military plays in defending our democracy no matter which party is in power again no matter which power party is in power no matter which party is in power she says that there has to be you know the military there to support the idea the symbology that the president defends American democracy. The military defends American democracy. The president is now defending American democracy. And if you add all of these things together, you start to see a little bit of an equation developing. Corrine Jean-Pierre tells us, like a math equation, the military defends democracy. We see this here, okay, that makes sense. We can all piece that together. We also know that the White House and the president say that the MAGA Republicans are a threat to democracy. So if we have those two things, the military defends democracy, the MAGA Republicans are a threat to democracy, what conclusion can you come to? Only that it's justified to use the military to fight the MAGA Republicans, to combat the threat to democracy. Do you see where this is going? And that's the type of language that she is using. Now, a lot of this is very, very exciting for some people in American politics. In particular, Hillary Clinton loves it. Clinton loved the backdrop. She said, Joe, I just love what you've done here. Very Hitlerian. It looks like Stalin's bedroom. And I just, I love what you've done. I can't get enough of it. Who did you work with on this? Was it Lenin? Hillary posted this. She said, the speech that POTUS gave last night is one of the most important I've seen a president give. We must name the threat our democracy faces, including a MAGA faction that incites violent insurrections and rejects the rule of law in order to overcome it together. Very excited. She loves those troops. She's like, you know, I would have liked, you know, some, you know, maybe bazookas on them or something in case Trump showed up. But more or less, she gives it a 10 out of 10. One of the best things she's ever seen. A plus where can she subscribe to Biden's newsletter? So that is Hillary. Donald Trump, of course, also reacting to this. And he posted over on Truth Social several things. Trump said, someone should explain to Joe Biden slowly but passionately that MAGA means as powerfully as mere words can get. Make America great again. If he doesn't want to make America great again, which through words, action, and thought, he doesn't, 
then he certainly should not be representing the United States of America. Trump said, if you look at the words and the meaning of the awkward and angry Biden speech tonight, he threatened America, including with the possible use of military force. He must be insane or suffering from late stage dementia, which is true. And Trump's making a very interesting point here. You know, Trump's brand is, I think, better than their branding, as is usually the case. They say MAGA Republicans. And you say, make America great again, Republicans? Like, that's what you're calling uh, everybody? Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of people who want to make America great again. Okay, yeah, we'll take that label. I mean, that's what the whole point is. And if you want to call them that, that's what we'll call them. And that's what we're fighting for. And on this point, you know, isn't it interesting? It's like there there are probably a lot of people who probably feel sort of like I do, where you might say, well, you know, I I don't know if I would voluntarily label myself as a MAGA Republican. Like I don't wake up thinking of myself as a MAGA Republican. But if you have a psycho dictator who comes out in front of a hellish Nazi-like landscape and lectures America about with every fiber of his being focusing on eliminating a legitimate political party as a threat to America, Aren't we all sort of MAGA Republicans now? Aren't we all kind of in that category? Does anybody want to live under that framing where you have a president coming out here and literally calling an entire oppositional party a threat to the country? I mean, just by default now, you're either Team Biden or you're a MAGA Republican. Which side are you on at this point? The president drew that line in the sand. He said that. You're either with us or you're against us. So doesn't that mean that you're either, I guess, a Democrat or a MAGA Republican one way or the other? Because you're either oppos- in opposition to the president or you're not. He said that there are some good Republicans. Presumably he means Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney. Nobody thinks that they're Republicans because they're not. So Trump, as usual, delivers some pretty nice truths here. Slowly but passionately, Somebody needs to read to Joe so that he can understand it. Because if you read too quickly, he's not going to pick it up. And he says, MAGA is as powerful as mere words can get. Four words, make America great again. And Joe Biden doesn't want to do any of that. Donald Trump does. And Trump's branding, not too bad on that one. How can you possibly be upset with being labeled as somebody who wants to make America great again? Hard to do. That was Donald Trump over on True Social. And now, my friends, since it is Friday, it's time to hear from you. And we're going to meme this into oblivion. I got several of them before we jump into your comments. But some of them are floating around on the interwebs. And here's one. The most obvious one, I would say. We've got Joe Biden out there screaming with his fists together. Mega! Just like Adolf was. We also have Joe Biden over here. Hashtag Pato Hitler. Pretty much obvious one there. And he's already got the memed uh, uh, Nazi helmet on. And of course, the replaced presidential seal. We had another one here. Old man yells at cloud. This was from the Simpsons. Old man yells at cloud and President Biden. Old man yells at clouds. We have that one here. Zulu says, finally, let's do this thing, baby. Here's another one. V from Vendetta. V for Vendetta. We've got President Biden and that little dictator from that movie. They must understand why they need us. Ah. That was basically Joe Biden yesterday, right? Pretty much. Looks the same. (laughs) And I think this is our last one. Benny Johnson over on Twitter posted this one. And then we're going to get into yours, of course, over on Locals. There's a whole thread of them that we'll chime in with here in a minute. But the last one that I had over from Benny Johnson, choose your fighter. It's like out of a video game. The good side, the bad side. Donald Trump with fighter jets. Tom Cruise probably back there. And then you've got Joe Biden, who's, I guess, emerging from the seventh circle. Uh, yeah, I think we know which way we should go on that one.